So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to do acid etching. And I'm going to go through all the different options that I have available to me, from the cheapest to the most expensive, and how their results end up, and if it's worth the money to go with the expensive or just use the cheaper stuff. So let's get started. If you don't know what acid etching is, it's basically acid eating away your metal and leaving behind a design. And how you get this design is having a resist on top of it or something to protect the metal against the acid. This particular piece is actually a failed piece. You can see all the lines through it. Technically, I could still use this if I cleaned all that up, but there's a way to not have those lines. And I'll go over this and show you everything I know. So there is a learning process going through this. And depending on what materials you're using and what acids, things will react differently, even how you hang your piece. So this particular piece, the reason why it has lines in it like this is because it was hung from here, like this, in the acid. So as things were falling, it would make lines. So to not get these lines, an easy way to do this is to set it flat inside of the liquid. And you could do this by drilling two holes in this instead and hanging it like that, or even just taking a piece of tape and sticking it to the back and hanging it inside of the acid. So let's start with the cheaper end stuff and work our way up. And we're gonna talk about the resist first. So some of the cheapest and easiest ways to do this is Sharpies. Sharpies will act as a resist, but they're not that great. And depending on your acid, it will just eat away the Sharpie. So you have to test it. And you will get little lines in your um, etch because Sharpies are an ink that you're putting down and there's lines in it. Even if you can't really see them, you'll see them in your piece. But it does work. And if you put it down in layers and really thick, then you can eliminate those lines over time. But you're limited to hand drawing with these or you're gonna have to use some sort of stencil. And there's also nail polish, which is a really good resist that you can use on just about any of the metals. And it works against most acids. It really depends on the nail polish itself, but you can just pick up something really cheap and it should work. You're still limited to what you can draw and you're going to have to use stencils to make something as accurate as possible, or you could just freehand and paint it on. It's also good to have this to cover up areas that you don't want the acid to etch. So like edges and stuff like that. So this is where it gets a little more technical. You're going to need a computer and a laser printer. So one of the cheaper ways to do this is to take glossy paper and you can put this through your printer and print a design onto this. And when you do that, the toner that you're putting on here with your laser printer is actually t technically a plastic. And when it goes on here, you can heat transfer it from here onto metal by heating up the metal and the actual paper itself and transfer it to your metal. The problem with that is it doesn't work on all papers. Your printer might eat this paper because of how thin it is. Uh, you have to find the right type of glossy paper. I don't even know if this is the right one or not. This is the first thing I was able to find. It's usually from um, magazines you can use. And you need to print your design in a mirrored fashion, so basically flipped over. So if you're having text going the right way, you need to basically invert everything over because you're going to be taking this and flipping it and putting it into your metal. So that's why you have to do it that way. I'll show you it later in this video. So there's also this blue stuff you see down here, which is a press and peel transfer paper for um, circuit boards. And it uses the same process as what I was just talking about, where you put it into a printer. And yeah, also don't get any liquids on it because that will happen. And I might have ruined that part of the sheet. But you put this into a printer and you can print your design directly onto this and then iron it 
onto your metal. And this stuff is known to work really well, but it's kind of expensive. I have 10 sheets here. And these 10 sheets cost about $25. So if you do get this, make sure you fill your sheet with the patterns you want. Because the other problem is putting this through the printer, you can only really do it once. Maybe twice if you cut it out and then tape it to another piece of paper to help it through. But yeah, get the most out of this as you can. And then there is a vinyl cutting setup that you can use that seems to work the best out of all of the ones I just went through. Maybe not compared to the press and peel if you already have a printer to print with it. But it is also the easiest one for me to do. Um, if you look at this, you could see how detailed it can get and how fine of lines it can do just using this cutter. And you can see I cut a couple patterns in here already. And to use this, it's pretty simple. So you can take a knife like this and depending on what part you want etched, you remove the opposite. I hope that makes sense. So if I want the outside pattern to be protected in all these lower areas to be um, etched into the metal, I would remove the lower areas. The only problem with this is it's a little more tedious. So as you can see, there's a lot of meticulous um, stuff you have to do to get all that stuff off. But once you do, it's as easy as cutting this out. So you get a very clean looking piece like this. And for this, you can't stick this directly to anything because the sticky side is on the other side of this. That being said, that's what this roll is for. So this is basically just a giant sticker. So all I'm going to do is take this, put it here, and then cut it out so I have a piece that can cover it. So you just take the backing off of this. There's a bunch of different types of this stuff, but I'll make sure to link everything I'm using in this in the description. But take this, put it over the top, and then just kind of push it down to make sure it sticks to it. Depending on how detailed and how small your pieces are, this can be kind of difficult. But there you go. And you can technically pull this off now and stick this to whatever you like. That's actually how I did this one with all the text on here and the little design at the bottom is by using this. So all that said, this is one of the more expensive ways to do this, but it is probably one of the best ways to do it. Um, this was a little under $200 for this cutter. And basically there's just a blade inside of here that will cut whatever you put into it. So you basically just line up this and put it in and it will cut it to whatever patterns you put in. I'll show you the computer side of this in a little bit. But so this is about $200. This roll of transfer paper is another $10. And then I got an entire pack of um, vinyl sticker sheets for another, I think, $20. So it, it adds up pretty quick. But once you have all this, you're pretty much set for doing any type of etching. You also make your own custom stickers if you have one of these. You can also cut paper using this. And that's going to come in handy in another video of mine showing how to make paper um, patterns to use in a roller mill to make patterns on your metal. But that's for another video. So that's it for all the resists that I'm going to be showing. Let's see, I'll move over to the different acids. So I'm going to be showing how to use muriatic acid and ferric nitrate. 
You can also use ferric chloride. It's a more commonly used one, but this will etch silver too. This has a harder time etching silver, which is a pro and con. So if you have something that has silver in it that you don't want etched, but you want other metals etched, you can do that. So for instance, look at this ring that it's silver and copper. If I put this into the acid, which I actually have a different one of this ring in the acid right now, it will eat down the copper side of this, making it have a um, difference in thickness and make it look diff completely different. And it will pretty much leave the silver alone. That being said, if you want to do it on silver, you need ferric nitrate. That being said, this is a liquid that you can easily get at like Home Depot or a pool supply store. And this entire thing is like $10. This on the other hand, you could probably buy online only. And this is not a liquid. This is crystallized and you're going to have to add it to water. And once you do add it to water, it turns into this. And it does not smell great. All of this should be done in a well ventilated area or outside because you're dealing with acids and fumes and they're probably not that great for you. The reason why it's green is because it has a bunch of um, copper inside of it that has dissolved. And as you can see, like I was saying before, I have that ring in there, like I was talking about, and a piece of mokamogane that I made because you can etch down the different parts of it as long as they're not silver and it gives it nice depth. And you might notice that I'm using a piece of copper wire to hold this in place. If you leave this in here too long, it will eat through this copper wire completely and your stuff will fall to the bottom. So keep that in mind or use a higher gauge wire or use some sort of plastic because this stuff will eat through copper. It really likes to eat through steel. Do not use steel on either one of these. It will just completely disintegrate it. Or technically for this, you could use a piece of silver wire because it won't really react with it. Another thing when doing all this, do not skimp on wearing goggles, a mask or a respirator and gloves. I have some nitrite gloves right here that I'm going to be wearing when dealing with everything here. Some other things you're going to want are packing tape. So with packing tape, you can cover the entire back of this and it will act as a resist. This piece was in the ferric nitrate. So you can see the front of it etched nice and the back has almost no etching done. So that's a one good way to protect it. You could also just paint the entire back with some nail polish too. And one more thing you might want is an aquarium pump. The, it's basically just an air pump and some hose and an air stone. What you can do with this is you can put it into your acid and make bubbles happen. And what the bubbles will do is accelerate how the acid is working and speed it up because it is constantly flowing through everything and not staying static. You could also just sit there and dip your piece if you want to, but like I said, these put off fumes, so you don't really want to be standing over it. Also, if you're going to be using this and you're going to be in a room that you care about the metals in the room, I would suggest putting something over the top of that because this will actually start to make stuff in the room rust just because it gets in the air. So like I said, do these outside or have a really good ventilation system. All right, to do this, I'm going to be using some brass that I cut out of a sheet of brass. So I'm going to go through and use all the different resist options and use the different acids to show you how everything works and what results you can expect. Each one of these are cut to a little over about 21 millimeters by 102 millimeters or 101 and a half. And this, the thickness doesn't really matter on these, but they are 0.4 millimeters thick. So I'm going to go over some of the more complicated ways first, which is using the computer to design your patterns for this. And I need those measurements for the computer so it fits. So let's go over to the computer and actually do that. All right, so in my computer, I'm going to be using a program called Illustrator, if you're familiar with that. Or you can use a free program called Inkscape, 
which is very similar. It makes vector-based pitchers. But if you're not going to be using the cutter, you pretty much should use these. So if you don't know how to use these programs at all, this is the perfect time for me to bring up the sponsor of this video, which is Skillshare. So this video is actually sponsored by Skillshare. If you don't know where that is, Skillshare is a place where you can find tutorials or classes on a lot of different subjects like computer stuff like I was just saying with the Illustrator or if you want to learn something like Inkscape which is a free program. They're very similar. So that being said I've taken some classes on there to get better at my Premiere Pro skills of making videos. There are also jewelry classes on here if you're looking for those and you might even find one from me. So Skillshare is giving the first 1,000 people to use the link in my description or the pinned comment two free months of Skillshare Premium. This will give you access to their large collection of all kinds of different classes. So you can check out everything on Skillshare for free for two months. And then after that, you could join for as low as $10 per month if you get an annual subscription. So thank you Skillshare for sponsoring another one of my videos and let's get back to what we were doing. But anyways, I already have a measured out piece here, which is the same size as our metal that I'm gonna be using. I'm just gonna make some copies of it so I can have multiple ones and line them up. And this way you can make multiple patterns for each one. And so you can fill out your sheet because one of our sheets needs, pretty much needs to be filled out if you want to get the full effect from it. I'm probably not going to because I'm doing it for this video purpose and I don't have enough things to put on it right now. So you can just use a text tool if you want and type in whatever text you need. It's one of the easiest ways for me to show how to do this without designing an entire picture. And then you can scale this and then you can go through your fonts and change it to whatever you like. So let's go with something in cursive like that and then I'm just gonna fill this out. So this would be something that the vinyl cutter would use, but we have a little bit of a problem. If you look right here, this isn't connected. And you could technically connect these by squishing everything together. And same thing here, because every bit of this will be cut out by the cutter. So I'm just going to scooch those together and that should fix the little bits there. Right here I don't really care about for this test purpose, but I would probably move this down and stretch this letter to make this work. That being said, this is for the cutter. This one, I'm just going to copy the same text, is going to be for the printer. And because this is for the printer, I need to flip this. So I'm going to reflect it and do it vertically. I'm just going to throw it over there, but there we go. So the reason why we have to do it like this is because we're going to be printing it onto the paper and then flipping it over and basically heat transferring it onto the metal. And when we do that, it's going to mirror it like this. Because if you just put this one directly on there, it will be backwards. The other thing to think about when doing this is how you want your pattern to actually look on your metal. So if you do it like this, it's going to be blocking out this area. And that's what will be saved from the engraving. Everything else will be eaten away by the acid. So if we come down here... So we take our text and turn it white. So how this will work is it will be protected all where the black area is and it will cut in and etch all of the white area. And that also means you can make borders and everything else that you want and designs around the outside and then cut out your piece and make little signs if you wanted to or pieces for your jewelry. This also doesn't really matter how you do this when it comes to the vinyl cutter because you're going to have these two pieces and you can select which one you're taking off when you're removing the sticker material. This is really important when you're doing it the iron-on way because you don't have any options there. So what I'm going to do is take this and flip it like I did last time. Then I'm going to scale this up a little bit more to cover more of the metal. 
because anywhere that there's not a covering, it will start eating your metal. So that's pretty much the basics of how to get designs made for your printing. So when it comes to saving everything, it depends on what you're going to be using with the file. So I'm going to show you the vinyl cutoff first, and you need this to be transparent. You don't need this box around it, but I'm gonna keep it here, but I need the inside of it to be transparent. And the reason for this is the program we're going to be putting this into only looks at outlines of an image. And if this is a solid thing, it compresses all this down to being a flat image, and it just looks at the outside and it'll cut a rectangle for you, and that's it. There are ways to change that in the program, but if you're going to do that in the first place, you didn't need to come in here and actually design something. So, go over here, go over to where is exports, go into my etching, and I made one already that was the wrong way, so I will do a new one. And then it'll ask you for resolutions, make sure that it's just set to high and make sure transparency is on. So when we're over here in the Silhouette Studio program, this will come with the vinyl cutter. You go over here and there we go. So you can see that there's a red line going around here and you want that outside line to be as thin as possible. And then the rest of this, it'll just cut, cut directly on the outside of everything that is transparent. You'll see in this area, there's a little weirdness going on here and it connects it, so this should be fine. So I'm just gonna place it up here like that and then I'm gonna go over to send. So with the red lines, they really show where everything's cutting, so you're 100% sure what's going on. Over here, you're going to want to set it to the right um, cutting material, which mine is vinyl matte. There's all these materials that it can cut. And you can even add your own. And then I'm gonna action, it's going to be cut. And then auto blade. It makes it so the blade will change its depth on its own. And all of this preset as soon as I made the material option selection. Then you're gonna come down here. So there's two options here and you can pick either one. If your printer is plugged into your computer, you can click here and that'll be the USB connection or you can use the Bluetooth connection, which mine has because it's across the room from my computer. And this is actually a really nice option to have that I didn't know when I bought it. So happy surprise. So I need to go turn on my printer. So to turn this on, it's pretty simple. You just push the power button that's right here and it will come to life. All right, so to turn it on, it's pretty self-explanatory. Just push the on button and it will adjust itself. And it has a Bluetooth button on here that's already on. This will connect with my computer, so I can just tell it what to do from here. So this is pretty much ready to go, besides we need to load up the material. So when it comes to loading up the material, it comes with this little plastic sheet, and this is what you need to put your material on. The material itself is whatever color you want to buy. I just bought a bunch of matte black ones, but it's all too big. So what I'm going to do is cut it to the same size as my cutting sheet. And you don't have to use the full amount like this for every cut because you can just place it wherever on here. But you want it to at least be able to be grabbed by the uh, rollers that are on the machine itself, which are all the way across it. So you kind of have to have something at least the length. So what I'm going to do is get this on here like that and just kind of hold it against there and push the feed button. And now that is in there, nice and snug, and this is ready to go. All right, so once everything is all good to go, you'll have a little ready thing down here, saying that it's completely connected to your cutter, and just push send. So basically what it's doing right now is setting the blade height 
and now it's going to cut it all out. So there we go. And then just push the button down to basically make it come out. Cut out. So you have two options from this point. You can take out the center part of it all, or you can take out the outer part, depending on how you want to etch your work. Also, if you notice on the E right here, it's a little messed up just because it pushed it over. So if I wanted to keep the outside, I also have to keep those little inside pieces. And that E one, I would have to basically push it back to where it goes. But that's pretty much for the vinyl one. So let's go over to the printer. So when it comes to printing out of a laser printer, it's a little bit of a different thing. You don't need any type of transparency and it will just put down whatever is black. So only work in black and white. So if you want your piece to have all of this um, cut out of it using the etching, then you have to basically invert it and reflect it so it's backwards like this. And if you want everything else to be cut and this to be the raised part, then it's the vice versa. So what I'm gonna do is get rid of this top one and move this up. I'm going to duplicate them so I have more chances of this actually working because like I said before, the blue peel and stick stuff is kind of expensive. Also make sure that your printer is a laser printer because this will not work with inkjet ink. In this program at least, I can just print it directly from here. So to do that, I'm just gonna go here and I go to print. And then I can pick what printer of mine I wanna use. I don't wanna use my label maker, so I'm going to use my Samsung and it will give you a layout of how everything's going to be. It looks like it might be a little too close on the edges. So I'm just gonna get rid of that line just to make sure this is going to work in one print. So there we go. But before I hit print, I need to set up my paper for this. So it ran into a little bit of a problem. It looks like the printer didn't get to heat this, so it's just toner on here. So I just shoved one through the printer by itself, not taping it to anything, and it works perfectly fine. So, like I said, test your printer and make sure that it works properly with this stuff. So here it is also printed on that glossy paper like I said I was going to do. So we'll see how that works out. I'm just going to cut these out real quick. So as you saw before, I need to actually start removing the vinyl from here so I can get this ready to go. The other ones are going to be put on with heat, so I'm going to go through and do that real quick. So there we go. And you saw that I had to work with the E a little bit. That little piece right there wanted to come up. So I grabbed it and put it back. So I'm going to take some of the contact paper and stick it to this. And you want to press this on there. And if you have a burnisher, you can actually use that. You can even see it changing a little bit as I use the burnisher. So there we go. And we basically have a sticker now. So these are all basically set up and ready to go. Um, our metal itself, you're going to want to clean it. So you just want to clean it off. I'm going to use some alcohol and a paper towel. And then I'm going to write on this one using the Sharpie to show you how Sharpie works with that. And I'm going to do a similar thing using nail polish. All right, good enough. For this, I'm just going to remove the sticker. So there we go. I got a couple bubbles in there. It doesn't really matter too much as long as they're not like fully on the outside. You can try to squish them out. That's going to be, but that's going to be a really clean etch. So when it comes to the heat transfer ones, 
there's a couple different options for you. You can use a heat gun, you can use an iron, or you can use a hot plate. Any of these will work, and it just depends on what you want to do. So all I'm going to do is turn this on, and then let it actually warm all the way up. Alright, so this should be up to heat now. So I'm going to start with this one, which is the one that's on the magazine paper. I'm just going to line these up beforehand. I might want to turn this down, because it is actually burning this one. There we go. Ventilate that out. And I'm just going to try to burnish all that down. Okay, next one. Next one's going to be the one on the peel and press. And it's going to be the one that's more thick. Ooh, way too hot. Okay, because that didn't work on the hot plate with the other material, I'm going to just go over to using an iron. So to do this, to keep things from burning, I'm just going to take some normal printer paper, put the metal inside of it, and then take one of my pieces and line it up. Close that on top. Try to make it so you don't move anything. And then take the iron and go over it. All right, that should be good enough. So let's see if it actually stuck in place. This is gonna be really hot, so I suggest using some tweezers. Well, it looks like it didn't. So it seems like it didn't do anything, so I'm just going to keep going. So now that it's all heated and everything, I could try to remove this, and hopefully it doesn't ruin anything. So, because I didn't bring it up all the way, I can actually kind of push this down and keep going. Right in this area needs more heat. Alright, so there we go. And you're going to see that there's a couple spots that we're going to have to touch up. And I'm probably just going to touch them up with the um, Sharpie. But this will make a really nice etch. So I'm going to put this one on real quick and then get to the actual point of this whole video and that's actually etching this stuff. Sorry it's taken so long so far. I just wanted to go over all your options because I know a lot of people don't have all of these things at their disposal, but they have some of them. Alright, so here are both of them done. And this one with the more ink needs some touch-ups and it's probably not going to be the best around that A right there. As for this one, there's really nothing wrong with it. There's a little bit of extra up here and up there, but I might be able to just scratch that off. So with this one, we're going to just soak it in water and it should just start dissolving the paper and we can rub it all off. Uh, hopefully it's stuck down the pattern on the other side. If not, we're going to just have a big sticky mess and this one will be a failure. So let's find out. All right, so that took a while. So I'm sure you could make this work and play with this and get your settings down, but I have the other means of doing this. And I just wanted to show that you could use this. So I'm just going to fill it in with some Sharpie to hide some spots and it's still going to etch it. So here's all the options laid out from the least expensive to the more expensive. And now we can actually start etching. So I'm just going to take some tape and put it on the back of them. So once we have them all like this, you could 
get a container similar to this or some sort of Tupperware to put them into and fill and fill this container or at least the bottom layer of this container with your acid. So this way you don't have to use a bubbler or anything. So I'm going to put the muriatic acid in here. And then with it like that, I'm going to use more tape than just this. So I'm just going to take a decent amount of tape, which I just ran out of tape. <laughs> then I'm just going to lower it down into just touching the acid. So I'm going to leave this in here for like half an hour to an hour. And I'm going to go put it outside. So make sure you don't have this anywhere that children or animals can get to it because this is dangerous and I don't think you want them getting into it. So I'm actually going to put these ones in here but facing up on the bottom. And then our last one I'm going to put into the uh, ferric nitrate. So I'm going to open up the ferric nitrate and then just put our pieces into it. And I'm going to have to lay them down a little bit. And I'm just going to leave it here next to the ventilation so any fumes get instantly sucked out. So we'll be back in like an hour or so. Alright, so it's been a little over an hour now. And these should be good to go. I have a jar here of water and baking soda to neutralize the acids. You'll see it all get all bubbly and stuff because it's neutralizing. Oh, you can see that both of these still have all of their resist on them. So they held up really good. Same thing with the nail polish and Sharpie. They're both still on here. They don't feel actually that deep, so they might need to go for a bit longer. And then we'll take a look at our ones from the ferric nitrate. You probably shouldn't be mixing the two acids in the same solution, but this is for demonstration purposes. So just keep that in mind. And you're probably not going to be using both acids anyways. So both of these also kept all of their resist. They don't look like they've gone deep enough though. So that's one thing that helps with the bubbles in the liquid is it's running over it. And every time it goes over it, it basically helps clean off the surface and acid will eat it and continue with that. Or you can also heat your acids and acids work way faster when hot. I'm just using them at room temperature. So I'm going to put these back in for a while and then once I get them out, I'm going to clean them up and then show you the results. All right, so here are all of them all cleaned up. To clean them off, all you really need to do is use a rag and acetone and it will strip everything off of them. Also, I took a 400 grit radial disc and cleaned up half of them so you could see what both sides look like. So we're going to go through the finishes of all of them and show you what the cheapest option is to the most expensive. So this is just writing on it with Sharpie. So it does work, but it is very faint and doesn't look great. You can make patterns and textures on your work using this really well. Or if you use a maybe a better Sharpie but not the best, and you're limited to stencils or freehand. Then here is nail polish, and the nail polish is better. Like, it actually protected it really well, but actually drawing with nail polish is a whole nother thing. I guess you could use a finer paintbrush and do this, or stencils just like the other one, and you'll get a nice finish like this. So like I said before, you can use nail polish on other pieces to cover up spots that didn't get covered. So that's another option. But as you can see, it does work really well. So this is from the magazine. And it's actually not that bad, especially because I think I overheated it and it messed up in this area, just plating or not plating, but sticking to it. But for the most part, it has a really nice clean cut to it, as you can see. So if you can get everything dialed in for this one, you could technically use the 
pieces of paper from magazines. But you have to play with it and figure that one out. Both of these are the peel and press stuff. It's just one covered the entire piece and besides the text and the other one did the inverse. And you could see how they turned out. They're both pretty clean on their cuts and their etching, but there's little spots here and there that it got underneath it or it wasn't um, thick enough so it started eating away. And then here's the non-clean side. And here's the vinyl one. And it came out pretty much perfect. So it comes off just like the others for the most part. Um, it does leave its glue behind and you'll have to clean it off with a um, solvent of some kind like acetone. But you could peel a lot of it off just by hand. But by far this is the best etch that I was able to get using all the different resists. Alright, so here we go. Here's all the pieces with a slight patina on them. And then I just sanded them down to make them have a better looking finish. Uh, these ones aren't as nice looking, in my opinion, but I think you can make interesting looking things using a style like this. This is pretty much the same style as the other one. And these are all in line like they were before, so this is the vinyl, uh, peel and press, the magazine, nail polish, and Sharpie. The other thing you can do with these, especially with the ones that are cut in where the letters are is add a paint or an enamel and fill that area in and then polish up all the rest of the piece. So that's pretty much up to you. This video was to basically just show all the different options and different qualities of stuff that you can get so you can make your own things. That's why it went into so much detail on everything and why the video is so long. And if you haven't noticed from the past, I've been doing that a lot more often, making full videos on a single process and then using that process in future videos and just pointing back to it if you want more info on it. Let me know if you like that or not because I can make just shorter videos if no one likes that or I can continue doing this making the long video explaining everything in detail and then making future videos that I could just point to it and be like hey that's the thing I'm doing if you want to see more go here. Just let me know in the comments. Anyways, that's about it. If you like this video, leave a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave a comment. And subscribe to my channel. I try to get out new videos every week. And other than that, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.